is being given out today in so like sports. NFL or something like that, or NBA or what? NFL and NBA. Jalen Brown, three hundred and four million dollars for five years. What? Woo! What? That boy can't use both his hands when he's dribbling, but he's got three hundred and four million dollars. Shout out to him, <laughs> Justin Herbert. Five years, two hundred and sixty-two and a half million dollar extension. I, oh, but I didn't even know his contract was up. Okay, what you yep, extension. Wow, Ooh, boy! Imagine There's that. So much money out there, y'all. So much money. Um, imagine that for for wrestling. Like, tell me if I'm wrong. Nobody has ever gotten paid their worth in I don't wrestling, think so. right? I don't think so. I think Stone Cold was getting paid though. Was he getting paid his worth, or was he getting paid to like not leave to go to WCW, even though he just got fired when he knew he wasn't going back? But if we look at the dollar, the dollar figure, especially now that we about to get into the next boom period, well, I guess we are in the boom period. Who knows what the right fees look like for WWE when they resign? AEW's gonna get broken off. Typically, like when Jericho went to AEW and then WWE started signing everybody those five years deals. That money they were given, wasn't that more like to not leave and stay money than what they're worth? Probably. Yeah, but, I, but I think Stone Cold was getting big merch money checks, though, because uh, he did an interview. He was talking about all the merch he was moving. Okay. And he and Vince uh, re, re up, uh, did a, renegotiated their deal, and then he got a couple of uh, seven-figure checks after that. Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, but that's think about off, of, that. off of his sales, though, though, right? Merch. Not just, yeah. Like, yeah, not his actual just contract salary. Like if 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 wrestling wasn't a work sport, right? And there was there wasn't trades, but there was. Hey, when your contract's up, there's a, probably a good possibility you're going to leave to go to another team, or AKA in this situation, another wrestling company. Like, how much would Roman? How much would his next contract dictate? His safest contract was up at the end of this year. What would he command with the amount of money they're making because of him? What does that look like? Is that how like twenty the, million a year? How much is the NBA uh, worth? Let's look and see. That's right. Could we could we know that the WWE just got that what that one billion dollar deal or whatever mm-hmm. it was? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I think it was one billion. Right. It was a billion. I have the yeah. contracts up from. The WWE current roster superstars, at least I guess the the big name ones. I have their how much their current salaries. Well, are. every team in the league is worth one billion dollars in Ooh. the NBA. The top three franchises are worth six billion. Hmm. So that I guess that speaks to uh, yeah how Jalen Brown can get that that type of money. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, would, I would like to know, like Cody. You know, in a couple of years when his contract's up, what does he command if it was like a true, legit open market? Kenny Omega and the Bucks, their contract's up this year. What do they command on the quote unquote open market? Are there salary caps in pro wrestling? Oh no. Hell no. No. Okay. Yep. Well then I mean I I personally feel they should get a they should get a lot. I mean, if you think about what they do to their bodies, com- again, I'm not saying Jalen Brown doesn't deserve what he's getting, because congratulations. Black man, you are getting the bag. But what these wrestlers are putting their bodies through with without an off season. That boy can't <laughs> use his other hand. <laughs> hey guys, though. Hey, so this is actually an interesting topic because um, you know, I work with a lot of non wrestling fans, so we've been talking basketball and sports all day long, right? But hey, can we introduce the pod real quick and get back into this topic? I, I really enjoy this one. Absolutely. Welcome to the TFW podcast. This is episode fifty one. I am your host, one. Matt. Joined by my two co-hosts, Ishan, Rhodesia. Yo, yo. There you go, man. Hey, so <laughs> now we got that the formalities out of the way. Um, I want to ask you a question. So if I would say the answer is no, right? We always think about like uh like wrestling has been kind of like a carny type of thing, right? Like where they kind of get over people and you, back in the day we they uh they try to get a union and no one wanted to get the union. And no one knew what, what each other was mm-hmm. making and yada, yada, yada. Um, so you would imagine that wrestlers weren't getting paid their work, right? They weren't even getting paid equivalent to what Jalen Brown's getting right now, right? Right. But you think things are getting a little bit better because, you know, like Brian Strowman, on one hand, what did he before he got released, wasn't he getting paid like a million or something? Like that on he was getting side? paid a lot. 
He was him and, and Bray. Yeah. And like Brian, I I wouldn't think he was worth that. You know, so but you know, he's a big guy, they saw a lot in him. So a guy like Roman, he gotta be worth like 50 mil, right? That's what I'm saying. If you were to look mm-hmm. at it like if we looked at legit sports, I mean we got some of these soccer players oh my that gosh. are making like five hundred million a year for one year. So you would have to think with the WWE being a billion dollar company, we just talked about all these NBA teams worth a billion dollars and their top players are making three hundred, four hundred million dollars. Granted, it's probably four, four or five years. You would think if it was a legit shoot situation, he would be making that type of money, which is insane to think about. And he probably you cut that in half for AEW, right? Because their right. next rights fees is probably maybe. I, I'm thinking they're going to get somewhere in the ballpark, of maybe three hundred, four hundred million dollars. I still think that's quite nothing. a lot too. It is. I mean, that's significant. Yeah, could be more than that too, depending on what they look at with uh, streaming and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, just I saw that I was like, man, if if wrestling was real, and we had to put like salary on these wrestlers, but I guess you know what if that was to happen though, everybody's working one contract and they getting out. Yeah, you know what I mean. The the mm-hmm. what they put on their bodies, the travel each and every mm-hmm. week. They're like, yeah, let me go ahead and. Do this four years, two hundred and fifty million dollar contract, real quick, <laughs> and get in and out, right? <laughs> Let me retire. I'm an age thirty. Hell, I do that. <laughs> so, what's going on, y'all? What y'all want to talk about in the world of wrestling? So, of course, I want to look at what we'll have we saw last night on Raw. There were some things that came up on there that getting us ready for SummerSlam. And one of the first things that I wanted to bring up was Cody and Brock, well, mainly Cody. Have Ishan, have you seen that any YouTubes on the upcoming American Nightmare? Any of his interviews that he's done about his new documentary coming out this week? Uh, I heard his interview on uh, Busted Open. He did okay. with Dave a little while ago. Okay. Um, just one of the couple or two things was his torn peck situation. I was just so like in disbelief of how he tore in his peck. So was this like public knowledge and I just didn't know or... If any one of you know, do you know if this was just kind of no never came out until what we just saw on these YouTube videos? Well, all we knew was he talked about it. Somebody may know because he said that he thought he spoke about it in one of the interviews. We knew that he tore his pick working out. And I think okay. it was the Friday before Hell in a Cell. So we knew he tore his pick in the gym. We didn't know the situation behind why it was torn, how he got to that point. But and yeah, we knew crazy. that he tore it in the gym. And, you know, when as I'm listening to the story, and that's one thing about Cody, he is one hell of a storyteller. So if we kind of try to draw a comparison or a parallel to the rap world, I kind of call him Nas because Nas is a great storyteller. But when he was telling the story, how he first gets into the gym, and hopefully I don't bore anybody, but I want y'all to know what I'm talking about here. He talks about how he first gets in the gym. He sees one dude over there just mean mugging him, grilling him, just like, what the fuck are you doing in here? He's in there and immediately... He's like, I already bet. I'm about, to, I'm, about to, I'm about to show my intensity. And then in the end, he puts 295 on, on, on his bench press. Now, for me, I personally can't do more than 115 without failing. <laughs> I just can't get past 115. But I, again, I don't want to bore y'all. But I can't get past 115. But for him, he did 295 without truly warming up. And what happens? He tore his pec and just his explanation of how he took me through that whole story and how it felt like Velcro just snatching off of his chest. Like that to me was just so like sick. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and again, in the end, I did not know that's how he tore his pec. I thought he was actually working. And then he comes to show up in hell in a cell and you see what we saw. And that's going to be always memorable for him. But again, I just thought it was interesting hearing that with Cody and how he tore his pec. And then in the end, the guy who was the mean mugger in the gym, taking up all the weights was probably the sweetest and kindest guy to him and ran over to him right away to help him. So I I didn't know if y'all had watched that video when he went over that. And I'm quite sure he's going to talk about more maybe in the documentary, but that was something I took away from that video I saw today. That's the epitome of men though. Like we're dumb (laughs) like that. Like pride, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's when I, when I heard the story, I was like, well, one, now I know why he was so, cause I kept wondering like, dude, you hurt yourself. It's all right. Like he was so adamant that like, he felt so bad when he tore his peck. And then 
I was like, maybe he's just chalking it up till he just got there and he got hurt. No, telling telling the story, I get it. I understand now. Like, you thought you were stronger than what you were and how you did it. He said, I think he said typically he can he can bench, you know, like 310, 315. So he said 295 yeah. wasn't crazy, but he just went in cold because he wanted to show the guy, you mean mugging me, watch what I can do. And I think the guy had <laughs> 295 on the bench. And it's like, look at that. He, now he's out seven months because of it. Right, but like I you said, I like, didn't know that story, but wow. Yeah. Yep. And go back and watch the video. I'll, I'll, I can't remember which one it was. I saw a couple videos with them today. Um, but go back and watch it because I'm doing a horrible job of explaining how the story actually went. Because like I said, Cody is Nas in the rap world. He's, his storytelling ability is amazing. So go back and watch that. I think you will really enjoy that. Yeah, that's that's really that's really crazy. But you know, um, I actually pull my back probably once a year. The small my small back. Once a year. You and have a big back? Never. <laughs> the medium back? No, no, the, the little daddy back. The bottom the of the back. back? The small of yeah, the back. The little, okay, got the it. bottom yeah, of yeah. the back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I pull it like once a year, and it's never lifted anything heavy. Um, the last time, well, actually, it's been a while. The last time I did it, I actually literally just, I just stood up, and I heard a pop. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, so for me, it's always a wear and tear thing. Right. It's 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 it's, it's, it's the whole year me not lifting properly, mm-hmm. lifting too much. And that's the thing about these wrestlers. Right. Like they, they put their bodies through so much year in, year out daily, you know, for our entertainment. So, you know, these kind of freak accidents are bound to happen. So poor Cody, you know, you might have been trying to do too much in that moment, but it probably was a build up, brother. It probably you probably needed a break anyway. Yeah. yeah. There's always a, a, a blessing. Well, the way you look at it, silver linings in life everywhere. Um, and then just the one last part about, and hopefully I'm not giving anything away, but me, the videos are out there, so I'm, I don't care. But I do care, but I don't care. But he mentioned that him and Triple H has never had the conversation about him sledgehammering the throne, which I thought was surprising too. But he also mentioned that H, he'll bring something up out of nowhere on you. But I thought that was really interesting. And to this day, to July, whatever he filmed that, interview he is still haven't had that conversation with triple h and there's no way h has not seen it <laughs> impossible <laughs> impossible h is h is buying this time he is he waiting sure is. for the perfect time he was like man you thought wrestlemania 39 was something wait till we tell you 40 you losing again <laughs> that's what i'm talking about let's get it <laughs> let's get his ass. get his ass h i was thinking last night i was watching when we were watching raw and um, I was watching Cody, and it's funny, like the whole "what do you want to talk about" mm-hmm. thing. I'm surprised, like they've allowed him to keep that, because if you don't know where that comes from, it doesn't make sense. Where does it come from? It still doesn't make it. right. Like I don't it came know where from, it comes in, from. In AEW, when the word was his contract was up, he's working without a contract. That was how he started a promo one time. So, what do you guys want to talk about? Okay. And it's funny because, like, okay. every crowd when he says it, they just pop. Like, if I was in the crowd, I'd be like, let's talk about something. You know, or like, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 40. They just, they just cheer Shoot more. Shoot something out, like, some well, topic out, huh? Yeah, it's not really like what it should be. But, but you, you know what? Like, like that catchphrase, like, because Cody got that from Dave Meltzer. I think I mentioned it before to you guys on the pod, because Dave Meltzer was on the clip with uh, Brian Alvarez. And uh, Brian asked Dave, he was like, uh, I think it was, what was it? I think it might have been about punk. And he asked him a direct question about punk. And Dave just goes, well, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> and then Brian says very, he's very irritated. He goes, Dave, I want to, he, he asked the question again, like a direct question. It was like direct, like, hey, what have you heard about CM Punk? Well, what do you want to talk about? Dave, what have you heard about CM Punk? It's what I want to talk about. It was something, something to that extent. But I didn't. Like, I didn't think it was that catchy of a catchphrase for him to use it. And the fact that he's over with it, it's just amazing. <laughs> but I will share, like, a couple of things about Cody. When I listen to his interview with Dave, so he sounds like a, just like a really nice guy. And I, I've had the pleasure of meeting him, I want to say, maybe three times? I know two times for sure. And I remember the first time I met him was in Dallas, my first WrestleMania. And this was, he still was Stardust, but he appeared at the Fan Assets as himself. And you guys have been to many fan assets. It's like a rat race in there, right? It's all these long ass lines. Mm -hmm. Like you stand in them forever. Um, But like I went to another side of it and it was like, it was literally no one in his line. 
So I don't know if people didn't know who he was or what was going on because he was Stardust, but he was he was Cody Rose. And I remember walking up to him and I said, and he was so nice, man. He was so genuine, man. He was wanted to spend time. He touched my shoulder, which I went, <gasps> like, right? Like I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. Like, <laughs> like I was surprised that he was so interactive, man. Like, did y'all he was hear so that intera- man just say yeah. what he did? I went, I went, I went. <gasps> Like right, oh, he just so interact because like I I hadn't at this point I hadn't met many wrestlers right, and the ones I had met at these fan asses was, was always real quick, right? They'll say hello or whatever, whatever, and he kind of you know you you keep it moving. Cody actually wanted to have a conversation, like he touched my shoulder and you know he tried to make it like a personal interaction. Yeah, right. So I wasn't I was shocked he touched me, but more so than anything. But he just so genuine, and he did the same thing with my wife. Really cool. And then um, hey, what did she do? Oh, did, she go, did she go? So, right, so, yeah, what so when she, she touched, when he touched her, well, what did she go? What did she say? Oh, she had like, she just kept, she was like, she had like, she knew the guy. She's having a conversation. Oh, yeah, my husband loves you. He's blah, 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 blah. I mean, so I she was, acted the way you should have acted. Yeah, oh, yeah. I <laughs> you, and you, and you I'll, I'll acted probably, the way she should have acted. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be probably damned. said, I probably That's said, three places right there. So, fast forward, I think maybe a couple of years later. Uh, oh, and by the way, in the conversation, I asked him, I said, hey, Cody, uh, and I kind of fumbled it a little bit. I said, hey, Cody, uh, uh, when are you gonna come back as uh as Cody? <laughs> like something weird I said. He was Mark. Like, and he looked, he was Mark. Like, right. And so he looked at me kind of strangely, like I don't know if he knew what I was trying to ask, but he's like, uh, well, it's not for the lack of trying. Right. Ooh, and geez. then and so then this is like maybe a couple months later, he, he got his release and he began his journey, right? So I saw him, Matt and I saw him at ROH in Michigan at an ROH show. And the Bucks was there. Cody was there. And again, Cody's being Cody. And he's noticed I had a Star Wars shirt on. Now, here's the thing. I didn't notice I even had a Star Wars shirt on. I thought the shirt just looked cool. <laughs> and I bought it. And it matched, my, it matched my, my Jordans and the pants. So I had no idea what it was. So he's talking to me. And he kind of like pats my chest. Like, right. And he makes mention to the shirt. And again, oh, wait. <gasps> wait. Yeah, I was like, what did you do then? I went, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> And so I wanted to tell him then how proud I was of him as being a fan that like, hey, you know, a year or so ago, you said that you wanted to, you wanted to, you were trying to come back as Cody. And I wanted to tell him as a fan how proud I was of him for, you know, betting on himself, you know, becoming a big deal, rebranding himself. But I, I didn't have the courage to have the conversation. Meanwhile, Matt's talking to the Bucks and he's talking to the Bucks like, there's some dudes that he know from around the corner, right? He's just sitting there laughing and ha ah, ha ha. You know, like the, I'm like, I wish I, I was brave enough to have those kind of conversations back then. I probably still can't have them now, but I just remember how humble and how nice Cody was when I met him those times. And he comes off that way in his interviews. Yeah, he does. I mean, he's a good guy, right? Well, the majority mm-hmm. of the talent are good people. A lot of times the fans take advantage of that, but. We know that, and typically we know the ones that aren't good people. Because we hear those stories, yeah, for sure too. Just like uh, we were watching, what interview was I just watching? And one of the wrestlers were talking about Bill Demont again. It had it to may be have Ariel. been L.A. Knight. Ooh. Was it L.A. Knight? Oh, it was L.A. Knight. And yes. he was just saying, yes, it was. He LA was Knight. saying how, uh, you know, there was somebody. He's like, I'm not going to name who they were, but uh, when I was, you know, coming up, uh. He didn't call it developmental. He may, I don't know if he said full sale or what, but he's like, uh, I didn't get along with one of the coaches at all. Main and coaches, some, he said. And something like me, somebody like me, where if, you know, I feel disrespected, you know, I'm going to kind of talk back. He was like, so I know I was, I kind of, I was, I was out of favors with this person, but it's all good because they're no longer there and they were gone a little bit after that. And I'm like, damn, Bill Lamont has no fans. Yeah. In that organization, from what we've heard, like mm-hmm. he was an ass. And I'm sure if you ask him, he'd say that was how I was brought up in the business. Sure. You know, so I was trying to replicate that. But at one point, somebody had to have pulled you to the side and say, hey, man, that's not how we're doing the business here. And then you continue to do that. I, I really don't believe that the first time he heard that this isn't how we get down, they gave him his walking papers. I would agree too. But it is funny. I, Every story about yeah. Bill DeMont it's from NXT or Full Sail, whatever you want to call it, the Performance Center, is nothing good has come out about it. And that's that's saying a lot. Mm-hmm. Not one person not one person came to defend him. Mm-mm. So they uh, last night on Raw, we got a couple more matches that are now confirmed. 
Nothing that we didn't know yet. But what was interesting is unless something significantly changes in the next week and a half, I don't think we're getting a tag title match. And we've, we've already talked about how KO and Sammy really, ha- they haven't had a match on pay-per-view in the last few months that I can remember. Rhea's going through the women's division. So mm-hmm. Liv is out. I'm still trying to see if that was a shoot or not. I know KO is legit hurt. Word is he has broken ribs. I know that's something you can work through. I don't think they are because of the angle that they shot on Raw. But Liv went out and they really sold that that shoulder mm-hmm. and that arm. Uh Raquel got hurt the week before, so I guess maybe there's a chance Raquel pops up on Raw Monday and then challenges her to the match on Saturday. But if that doesn't happen, we're not getting a, a woman. women's championship match outside of the triple threat, Asuka, Charlotte, and Bianca. So I thought, I'm like, damn, okay. Uh, kind of interesting. Interesting in, in where they're going with it. Uh, we got Gunther and Drew. That's official now. They made um, Becky and Trish official, which we knew that was going to be a thing. Right. They made Jake Paul and Ricochet official. We knew that was going to be a thing. And then word today, and I believe it when I see it, they're kicking the can right down the road, kicking the can right down the road. Word is today that LA Knight is going to have some form of promo segment on <laughs> SummerSlam that can turn into a match. All right, well, we'll see. Not holding my breath. But Next. hopefully he is there so he can get that pop. But, I mean, we talked about it last week. We don't have to go back down just how big Wrestle- or SummerSlam looks. They got a hell of a car. I mean, not one match on that card is a throwaway. All those matches. And we're going to be there. So that excitement level already goes up when you're in the building. But this looks like a, a fantastic show. Of course, next Wednesday's pod, we'll preview the show. So we'll be in attendance that weekend. So really looking forward to that. But I did think that was interesting. I'm like, okay, tag title match in limbo. Rhea's championship yeah. match in limbo. And the Judgment Day, they, they had probably out ninety minutes of Raw, man, and a one Rhea facet was, or another. I didn't go back and look. I, 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 I'm maybe I'll do some research. I would love to know the percentage of segments that she's in. It's crazy. She's in a lot, and she's carrying it. She's doing a, a hell of a job. We know that. But it reminded me a lot of like back in the day. You brought up Austin earlier. E Austin, you know Rock when they were in like four or five segments a night. And that's a lot of work, you know, speaking segments, physicality segments, it, that that's just not, Hey, we just go out there and do it. That takes a lot of planning. They're putting a lot on her in a good way because she is nailing it. That the entire judgment day, if, if we would have looked at where they are now compared to when they first started that faction, we all hoped like, Oh man, we all want, Punishment Martinez, I loved him saying punishment last night. We all want Damian Priest to get something. Hey, we know they dropped the ball with Rhea. And then when they brought Finn around and it was game over because he took over for Edge. But if we look at kind of like what that faction was, I guess two two years ago, a year and a half ago. Yeah, year and a half. Where they are now. Yeah. Damn, it's like, man, it's it's fantastic to see. It it is fantastic to see. Cause there's been a lot of times where we've been wrong as fans, where you see somebody like they ain't got it. And then they show us and a lot of it. It takes time too. we know that it takes hundreds of thousands of miles on the road. It takes hundreds and thousands of bumps in that ring to get to where you want to get to. But for Dom to get to how good he's gotten with his persona as quick as he has. I think that speaks a lot. Rhea has taken off and I bring it up a lot, but I just remember when she looked like a deer in the headlights mm-hmm. compared and, to where she was on NXT. And, and last because night, Vince was not, she was not giving Vince what he wanted out of her. And you look at her now, she is absolutely killing it. She came out last night with the baby oil treatment. Did you notice that? She comes out, this was the first time they show them on Raw. And she had the baby oil glistening from her neck all the way down her arms. I'm like, look at her. She's huge and in a good way. I love muscular women. I love when a woman can show and build muscle. And women who don't, too. Well, that's fine, too. But I love seeing a strong woman. And, man, she came out with that baby oil treatment. I'm like, look at her. trying to look like she's one time rock or somebody like that. <laughs> but, like you said, night and day, deer in the headlights. 
to someone who's like, probably give me that baby oil before I walk out because I'm about to I'm about to run this. And then ran it the whole night. Again, like 90 minutes, half of raw was judgment day in one form or the other. A lot of pressure on Finn, man. I I, I don't see Finn winning next he Saturday at, at SummerSlam, but everybody I else mean, has got something. <laughs> he ain't gonna have nothing if he doesn't win. I mean, he took the he gave Rollins the coup de grace. So again, you say that this doesn't even matter anymore. But in my little simple mind, I always feel like who get that that big time beat down that means that at the pay per view they or the PLE in this case now they're gonna um, they're gonna win. So no, yeah, that matters. I, it, they just wasn't the go home show. We got a whole another show next week. If that was if that was the last show before SummerSlam, then yeah, you can look at it and say, all right, well. Seth is probably going over because they got the heat on him, and they beat the hell out of Seth. They good sure for him. Did. Good for him of taking that ass whooping and dumbass crowd. Y'all was oh loud, my nice God. job. But Whoa. singing during the beatdown was trash. Asking, Asking for, for tables. tables when you just had a table spot with Gunther and Drew before that. But Seth is supposed to be your guy, and you're asking for another table. Like, come on, make that make sense. Yep. Mm-mm. Hey, but, but Rhodesia, that, that baby yeah. oil treatment, like, it's, I ain't see a muscle woman. I saw all women right there, man. She, <laughs> she came out there. Glistening man. for you, huh? Oh, my God, she was. <laughs> like, I was mesmerized. I was like, because I like to do other things when I'm watching my wrestling. I had to, I had to just, just The double take watch. that one, huh? Yeah, I had to, mouth was open. I looked down and had a little drool on my on my shirt. It was <laughs> ridiculous, man. See, now that's when you can go, uh, or ah, uh, the way that Cody touched you. <laughs> no, I wouldn't talk to Rhea. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be too scared, huh? <laughs> yeah. If I was to get an autograph, I'd just give her the thing and turn my back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not going to laugh at that because I'm the same exact way. I'm not about to go home on here and act all hard and stuff. Man, there would be so many times. And now we have, like, the Apple Watches. Could you imagine, to Matt, when we were going to the fan accesses and I had an Apple Watch, how high my heart rate would be? Like, to the point where I, each time I'd be like, I, I don't even know what to say to them. Like, I'm so scared. And I was like, just talk. Just tell them how you feel. Tell them about something you just saw in their last match. And I'm just like, I, I can't do it. I can't do it at all. The person yeah, I probably I was... The the most talkative with was with Big Show, and my goodness, is he just a straight teddy bear? And he made it so personable where he pulled things out and made it really easy to talk to. But yeah, I'm always to this day I'm still scared to to talk to a wrestler. I'll get to see my close, warm, personal friend Trendy this weekend. Yay! I'm sure, she'll remember me. <laughs> make sure she don't she don't put my my arm out of socket this time. <laughs> I still but maybe she doing Trendy this, yeah. <laughs> I still haven't met her yet. That's like my on my list of things to do. Her and Shawn Michaels are on my list. But back to Raw, though. Yeah, you guys are right. I put a note about uh, how much Judgment Day we got on that Raw. Um, and we got all of them. Like, right? We got, you mm-hmm. know, Senor was was in full effect. You know, I know they kind of saved Finn for, like, the end. Um, but, yeah, we got a lot of Judgment Day. And you think about it, like, it seems like these guys are on a path of breaking it up soon. And, like, I wonder who's going to fill that void if they do split. Because at the end of the day, I don't see Finn winning this match either, right? I, I see something happening between him and Damian. It's going to cause friction and eventual breakup, which I'm not necessarily ready for as a fan. I think there's still a lot of meat on that bone. Um, but I think they did an amazing job with it. Um, I think they just look so great together. And as but you do, said, but Matt, do you th- but do you think they're breaking up or do you think a member is leaving? Because those are two totally different mm. things. They're, I, I think they're giving them way too much TV time for them to break them up. Now, if you say, hey, I see Finn being kicked out, or I see Finn leaving, or I see Damian Priest getting kicked out, okay. But I don't think I don't think they're breaking up. Or I, I don't think they're I don't think the entire group is disbanding. It's what's next. Cause like for instance, like for me, like this is the most personality that Finn has shown since he's been on the main roster, in my opinion. And if my like, like Usually, if someone splits from a heel group, that person is is, is turning face, right? Mm-hmm. So the most natural face would be Damien, right? He's trying to he's showed high moral in certain aspects, right? Um, wanting to win by himself, wanting to do some other things alone. He's kind of hasn't really been a heel. He just seems like a really tough guy. So you can see him kind of splitting away. But then that leaves Finn 
and Dom and Rhea. Now we said before we can see Dom and Rhea just kind of doing their own thing on the side, right? And then Finn goes off and does his own thing. But I feel like they're they, they're so strong together that I think it would be a disservice for that company as fans to see them break up too soon. Um, that's just me though. I, I don't know. I. I, um... I, I I thought Rhea was leaving at WrestleMania and that didn't happen. So at this point, and I'm glad it didn't happen because how it's transpired. Um, but I don't really want them breaking up. But I can see maybe – see, I think actually I can see Finn leaving because I feel kind of the opposite. I kind of feel like Damien is kind of showing more hillish tendencies where Finn is more about himself. Well, I guess that could make him hillish, but like he's more about like self-centered about it. But I can see, mm-hmm. I can see Finn breaking off for good or for bad from judgment day, but whatever they're killing it. They have a lot of TV time and I'm never bored by it. So amazing. What else from raw? Anything else? Yeah. Um, I'm, Oh, I got a few I, things. Pro- probably the highlight for me was Champa and Reed. Shout out to those guys. Yeah. That, that match. One of my things. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. You talk about hard hitting. That was it. Shout out to both of them for doing uh, doing each other uh, some some favors mm-hmm. in that match. Uh, it, it was stiff. It was there. I thought it was really really good. Um, Bronson I thought that is was athletic. Good. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, the, and the, I said it last night. And any big guy has to in wrestling, or you would kill your opponent. But he does such a great job of controlling his weight. If you watch his moves. The majority of the moves that he gives, he is super safe. And mm-hmm. he is taking the brunt of the impact or not giving the impact at all to uh, the person he's wrestling. So, but like I said, anybody who's in wrestling, they got to be safe or they wouldn't be in wrestling. But that was one of the things I, I noticed. So shout out to those those two. Tommaso uh, looks else? like Tommaso. He um, did. Our he newest did. member of the Real Black Combat Club. Um, the the fifth version, which y'all call Big Show, like this back and forth. We got another Apollo Cruz personality, just him, right? Just Apollo. So I'm excited about this one. I'm actually excited about this one because um, it's back to him. He's not the Nigerian prince or king or whatever he was was called. Um, but he's gonna be again. Yeah, he's gonna be down with the real black combat club. But why, why so would he be down with that? Did did somebody show up? Did I miss? Did Bobby Lashley show up? Did the Prophet show up to talk to him? No, but a brother was in the back, but, but a brother or, 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 or was, a brother was he in the back in the talking back. to Tazawa, and then they who, gave who him the old, the, 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 old, the old traditional that I cannot stand. The old traditional, I'm a face, so I got to give you the line up. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? And he proceeded to get smashed Big in the match. It's like, man, like you ain't do him no favors. <laughs> Paolo's the one that they need to keep out. I said it was. Oh, uh, <laughs> you not, no, that's <laughs> wrong. That's so wrong. Every single week, I'm just we just chopping off. <laughs> Black folks, <laughs> that can't be a part of the new. Yep, you can't make it either. You so, I don't, oh, I don't, oh, I don't, oh I don't support any black kickouts or from the cookout. Whoa, Welcome what the all. f? I swear, everybody watch CFW podcast. Um, my man, Gable Stevenson. I bring him up last week, and what happened? He's doing a LeBron James where he's going to, where he's bringing his talents to next week. No. Don't air horn that man. No, what? not next week. As we as we take this show, right, it's happening. Oh, yeah, it's oh, happening oh, it's on NXT it's, tonight. Or it may okay. already happen. Yeah. yeah, man, they man, that was a quick turnaround. We just talked about this on Sunday, and they booked it and everything already. Put them on there on Tuesday. Let's oh, see my. if they said uh, where he's is... taking his talents. <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> hey, why let's you see. why you looked that up, uh, Matt? Like I did have a note here because I was going through the show on Raw and. If you look at that show, we talked about, you know, um, Judgment Day was ha- had a, lot of, a lot of heavy lifting on that show, right? Okay. And when Vince was doing the show, like, them dudes was, was joppers, right? They was losing week after week. They were stale. They were nasty, right? Then you got, you know, the Bronson Reed match that you enjoy with, with Tommaso. Tommaso still been in NXT, right, when Vince was doing this thing. And Bronson was out of the company, <laughs> like, right? Uh, who else is on this show? Um, from that time period, uh, Ricochet, um, right? He he wouldn't even get on the show back in the day, right? And he had a major, major segment, and he's going to be in a big match with uh on SummerSlam, and then even the um Imperium guys, yeah. right? Right? Those guys were mm-hmm. on their way out. So you think about it, like 
what, two years, Vince is out, uh, Triple H comes back. He's really revitalized a lot of those careers, and we have some really great shows right now. Because Raw, you know, back in the day was a chore to watch for three hours. But, you know, I watched the majority of that show last night and the other half today. It didn't seem like a three-hour show. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They've, they've done a good job. And granted, we mm-hmm. are a week away from the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. Yeah. So that has something to do with it, too, because they're, they're building these stories. Speaking of building stories... Gable Stevenson versus Baron Corbin this Sunday. Yo, at, so he goes on B- PTO and he comes back yep. for a title shot. Dang. Title shot. You said going against Baron Corbin. Oh, no, Baron yeah. Corbin. What, is, belt, is, what belt does Baron Corbin have? I guess no belt, so never mind. Except from the record. Ex- except, except from the show. Take that off. Jeez. Uh, Always ragging shit on E for not watching the shows. Yeah. Oh, I'm I don't watch, watch NXT like too. that. I really don't watch NXT like that. I'm going to need that, you to watch the shows, too. Yeah, so, that, so that's Sunday. I don't know how they got to it. I'm excited to watch it after we get done with the pod. But yeah, that's happening Sunday. Cool. So, so um, One thing, if we still do NTFW Moment of the Week, OMG, Corey Graves, imitation of Living Kaiser. Oh, my goodness. When he was talking, I'm like, oh, my God, how is Ludwig, Ludwig in the match wrestling and yeah. talking on commentary? <laughs> He did a good job. He did. I bet, I, I just bet like um, if Vince was still was on the headset, he'd been popping Vince. Yeah, but he'd tell him to do it every week. Yep, yep. every he'd week. Do it every week, damn it. That's such good <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, but SummerSlam is coming up, so I do have just um, some trivia I want to ask you. Is that okay if I do that with y'all two today? On this what wonderful evening. So I'm going to call this just the TFW Trivia. And I'm going to do it. A new segment. It was Ishan does. This is do a new segment every once so often. Um, but SummerSlam. Where, and I'll give you extra credit. Where was the first SummerSlam at and in what year? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go first. So I think I know it. I'm not, of course, I'm not looking at it or anything. I'm going to say... I wanted to say 91, but it might have been 93 was the first year, maybe. And I have no idea where it was. I, I'm You're way off on the years. I'm earlier. Emma? Earlier. 89? I I close, 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 close. Very close. It's piping hot. Eight, 88. Ah. And where and was I it? Believe it? I believe it was in Jersey. In Melvins. Uh, I'll give I'll hint, because that's not it. This place... People say energy is real there. Oh, in Egypt? That's crazy. You it was what? in the tombs? You know what? <laughs> I said the energy is real there. They out in the stars? Art, art, is- <laughs> artists that play there, people who go there, they say it's a true energy in the building. Wow. Oh, the Pontiac yeah, Silverdome. <laughs> that, that was where MJF body slammed Big Bill. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's all, right. That's all 672 right. pounds of them. That's right. That's right. I'm like MJF, really. Um, no, MSG, Madison Square Garden. Nice. Okay. Well, I was close mm-hmm. when I said Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some more trivia, but I want to stay on SummerSlam for right now, though. Uh, so this thought. Or and this the, only, the only way you can give us these questions is yeah. if you knew the answers before you looked them up. I did know the answer. Perfect. Because you didn't know yeah. the answer to the first one. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. I you did. did not know the first SummerSlam was in 1988. Yes, I did. It was in Mass Square Garden. You, you did not know that. Did. I did. You are a liar. She Googled it. You are a liar. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah, I purposely looked it up and I knew Angela it. Angela Bassett <laughs> said, you are a liar and a cheat. <laughs> and I don't want you. And I don't want you. Um, okay. Next thing. This is completely inspired by somebody else. I was going to actually act like it was an original thought, um, but from our friend Brandon. This is going to be fun. Just for, for fun and games and laughs and giggles. What rumor do we want to start for SummerSlam? So, for instance, his was The Rock is returning to Detroit. If you had to make up a rumor, because evidently people are listening to the TFW podcast, what rumor do you want to spread? And we know what's not happening, right? Well, we can manifest it. I got mine already. I'm waiting on E. Oh, okay. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus LA Knight at SummerSlam. He calls him out. 
Stone Cold answers. He walks by me, gives me a high five. Stone oh, Cold gosh. does. <laughs> yeah. And he, and he whispers in my ear, make sure you stay out of the crowd tonight. Don't don't run up on Brock tonight. I'm like, yeah, sir, you're right. I won't. And we have our match. My rumor is anything. Actually, my my, my initial one was just going to be that LA Knight was actually going to do anything on the show because I know that's Why not going to happen. Why are you still mine? Why are you still mine? Yep. But he, he said it was LA Knight and Austin's and I got to pivot. Oh, I got one. Perfect. Shane O'Mac comes back and tears his other quad. I'm not, I'm not condoning that, dude. That's my rumor. It's Shane O'Mac's coming back. That rhymes. You should be a rapper there. <laughs> so hey, you, you remember how loud we popped for uh, Shane back when he came? Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> when he came back in Detroit. Yeah. We when he came so back hot. the first time. Yep. Yeah. We was hot. That was great. Was that like a Hell in a Cell or something? No, it no, was a Raw. Like, like yeah. It was a regular Raw. Okay. Faithful okay. night. Okay. Yep. Um, well, because that's what I was going to say. LA Knight was going to be um, having a segment. Let's say that because Rhea doesn't have an opponent. It's going to be Rhea versus Shasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Man, she's still on crutches, too. Is she? I thought she mm-hmm. was I thought she was already healed. Mm-mm. Nope. Still yeah. on crutches. So yeah. hopefully she's back in. So I think they're going with her and Julia and in, in JPW soon. But I am sure she was pegged for either Forbidden Door or mm-hmm. All In. I or am all out, pretty yeah. sure on that. Yep. What else? Uh, what else? What else do you have? And it's just with two silly questions around John Cena. Uh, one, what championship has John Cena not held in the WWE? I can give you multiple choice if you want them. Or at SummerSlam? No, just in general. I said uh, this is different trivia. I said John Cena trivia. Jeez. You said what belt? He hasn't won the women's title. <laughs> okay, I'm done playing with you. You know what? I'm done playing with you. I'm I'm over it. I'm over it. <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'm I'm, I'm over. It. I, this segment was the first and done. I'm over it now. All right. <laughs> Next. I don't care. Yeah, I said I don't care. <laughs> what else? What else from Raw? <laughs> Anything else that y'all want to talk about from Raw? Nah, I think we covered it pretty good actually. So they got they got one more go home show on for Raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got some things to take care of. Of course, we know this week they have SmackDown, put a little more heat on Jay and, and Roman, do something with Theory, something with LA Knight. Um, there's a rumor that Grayson Waller is going to have some type of something at SummerSlam too. So that that's good. We know everything they've given him so hard, so far that he's killed it. Killed it with Edge, mm-hmm. killed it with John Cena. Sure. Yep. So that should be good too. They got some good stuff going. You know, we talked about it last pod, but they are in a really, really good space. AEW is also in a really good space. Just saw yesterday they posted or Time Warner. I I keep calling them Time Warner. WB posted that 2.3 million people watched Blood and Guts. That is huge. So shout out to them. That number was including um, the live show, DVR, and I think if they tuned in for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, it was like one of those metrics. But 2.3 million, that's massive. And then Collision, I think, did over 600,000 viewers Saturday. So they got some good stuff going too. I mean, we are absolutely in the renaissance of popularity really for wrestling. It really is. Yep. It really is. And I'm it, so proud great, and happy to be It's in. great to be in that. Yep. So we have, uh, we got Dynamite tomorrow. There's not much on the show that I'm like really excited to see. To be honest, I looked at the, the card and I'm like, it's going to be a good show, but there's not much that, they, I think it's Swerve and Darby Allen. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. But, um, That'd be fire. Fire emojis. We'll, we'll get the next thing in Adam Cole and MJF. Of course, that is appointment viewing for me. I just hope it's not just another segment to further show dissension before we get to Saturday. But Saturday's collision is like a pay-per-view. Saturday's show is it's probably going to be their best collision to date. They're going up against some competition 
I, you know, boxing, boxing fans are probably not wrestling fans like that, but we got the biggest fight of the year so far. We've been waiting for a long time in the boxing community. That's Saturday night, but that's probably, you know, 11 p.m. or midnight Eastern time. So collision to be done with. But we we got a month until all in. They got to start <laughs> naming some of these matches. I mean, we got to mm-hmm. get we got to get there because the week after is all out. So whatever the build is for all in, you're going to assume the majority of that is going to filter into all out. I can't see them you would imagine. somehow pressing a reset button in six days and then getting completely different feuds or matches for, for all out. Now, mm. do we see Ibushi tomorrow? Do we know what, no. what that situation is uh, about? No, it was allegedly a one-off, but Kenny cut a promo oh. when the show went off saying that this won't be the last time. So check this out. Cut a promo and said, this won't be the last time I have a feeling that you'll see Ibushi in AEW. And then he said, and the Bucks were in the ring with him, that wherever the Bucks go is where Kenny's going to go what? for the rest of his career. And that raised some eyebrows Whoa. with the fans because, one, they're like, why did you say that? Right. But two, he, he basically put the stake in the ground of saying that we're a package, package. deal. Yeah. It, if the Bucks leave, I'm leaving. If the Bucks stay, I'm staying. Hmm. Now you know what I got to ask y'all. We know their contracts from what we heard is up in November. Are the Bucks and Kenny re-signing to AEW? Or do they go to WWE? How long is Punk's contract? Oh, he's got some years. So they're going to WWE. They mm. they did the, they did the ultimatum to Tony. They said, "Listen, so it's either us who helped find this found this company. They're the true founders of AEW. There you go. I found a way to use founders. They're the true pioneers and founders of this company. It's us or CM Punk, and he chose CM Punk. At least that's the narrative I'm gonna push. It's very interesting because um, when I listen to Kenny talk about the situation vaguely." On Swerve's podcast, he it didn't seem like he had ill will towards Punk. And it's not like he was the best friends with him, but it's not like he had mm-hmm. really ill will to where it would affect the decision that he would make for the future. Um, but I didn't think that Cody would leave <laughs> AEW. There it is. Mm-hmm. Right. And he left. So it depends. Like if it is is uh Vince or a trip away to one to fly to Colorado and not Colorado, California to, to the Bucks home and convince them to leave like uh, Vince did with Cody. But the bigger question is, I mean, would you, would you want to see them in WWE or stay with AEW? Because we have H. I would like to see them in WWE. If they didn't have H, then no, I would say stay in AEW. This is about to be a hot take boy. Uh oh. Kenny still has a lot of work that still can be done in AEW. Bucks. Bucks could leave tomorrow. And I would be very happy and excited to see what they would do in WWE. Kenny, not so much. Yes, Kenny, we we get we would get Kenny Cody. We would get Kenny Roman. We would get Kenny Seth. Ooh. I mean, there's a lot of matches, of course, we know we could get there. AJ? But I'm just looking at, yeah, I'm I'm looking at, though, we still haven't gotten that Kenny yet in AEW. Even when he was a heel and he had the championship, he was going through all those health issues. He had to kind of tame and switch his wrestling style up a little bit. And I'm not asking for New Japan, Cody, every week. But, I mean, uh, Kenny, Kenny, but I need that run. I I need that, yep, everybody who said that he's the, the GOAT, he's the best, show us for a long period of time. And I don't know if we really got that for as long as I want that from him. So if it's a package deal, if I had to say like, hey, Matt, you get to write the story of where those three guys go, where do you think they'll be maximized the most? Unfortunately, I would say WWE. And why would you say unfortunately? Because they are, I mean, the Bucks, it's all elite wrestling. It really is, yeah. Like, that that's hard to say, 
A, you're better off somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And you found it, you helped found the company, it's in your name, et cetera, et cetera. But I know, like, since Collision has started, mm-hmm. if before Collision started, I would have said, if to what you said, Rhodesia, Mad Nick go into Tony's office. All right, I hear you trying to start this new show. Look, Tony, it's us or Punk. Take your pick. I would have said at that time, Tony's got to take the Young Bucks. Age, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think Punk is more valuable to AEW than the Bucks are. You can't you can't make a show centered around the young bucks right now. That's fair. You can center around Kenny. That's why I said, ah, it sucks if it's the all or nothing, but just thinking about the matches, thinking about Kenny and the bucks getting a WrestleMania moment. Ooh, that's big time. All in can be that for him this year, and then if they continue to go to stadium shows. But, yeah, I I think that Punk is more valuable to AEW than the Bucks are. So I think I know your answer, because I think you just said it, So, but I'll still ask it, and I want to hear what you say for you, Ishan. Which one is more grand? Will AEW lose more by losing the Young Bucks and Kenny, or would WWE win more because they have them there. Who's taking the bigger L or the biggest W? Hmm. The bigger L would be... Or no, either which one's more grand, the bigger L of AW or the bigger W for WWE? I think it's a bigger deal if they go... If he go- Exhibit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, capital Z is Cody Rhodes. Got it. Yep. That answers your question. Anybody who goes from AEW to WWE is bigger in WWE. And when I say anybody, that's a caveat of they're going to use them properly. Imagine Jade with the WWE machine behind her. Imagine Kenny. With the WWE machine behind him. The merchandising agreements of the Young Bucks with the WWE machine behind them. All the the stuff for the kids. Imagine the kids who have never seen the Bucks because (laughs) AW is in the TV 14 product. Seeing these guys with tassels on there. Come out with the tassels. (laughs) Flashy. Headbands. Yep. Caricature cartoons it's ga- it's on game them. over. Yeah. It's game over. And and that's just those four. I mean, we can keep going down the line. Of course, Ricky Starks. You guys know I'm big into presentation. And I think that that is what WWE does better than anything. I think it's better than the Super Bowl. I think it's better than the NBA Finals. I think it's better than the majority of concerts you can go to. Their presentation is second to none. And you can put talent... Around that presentation, it's lights out. Now, I don't want all those people going to WWE. No. And we said this goes in cycles. Right now, WWE is fantastic. Give it a couple months, something may happen. And now we're like, damn, I'm glad AEW's here because WWE's trash right now. As soon as they got through that bloodline story, man, everything went down to shitter. Now look at Tony and those guys at AEW doing incredible stuff with Collision, Dynamite, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want us to ever have a, a monopoly again. Because I, I think if we had a monopoly we wouldn't be at, back to the point that we are now with this boom in wrestling. I don't think so at all. No, because competition brings out the best in everybody. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep or the I worst, but, but, but in general, in this example, it brings out the best. I know, E, you probably feel the same way because I know you're not the biggest AEW in terms of like watching Dynamite and being more excited for AEW and URWB right now. But would you agree that those three – would be a bigger get for WB than maybe staying in AEW. Oh, I do actually agree, but because you know, I think about if think about Kenny, like I know you want to see high end New Japan Kenny in AEW, but 
who do you want to see him in the ring with? Right. You think about if you can make a list, mm-hmm. we can we can talk about come off a list off the top of our head right now that we want to see him wrestle in WWE. Right. And I and I think that right now the Bucks have done as much as they can do in that division. Yep. Right. They've done as much as they can do. And you think about it right now, you know, with Kenny and Bucks, they're, they're not holding any championships. You know, they're mm-hmm. not. I mean, we, they, they've been feuding with the um, the BCC for quite some time. But if you were to take them off the programming, I don't know if AEW will miss that big of a beat. Because they were gone for like, some time. right? I think that seeing Punk back has really kind of put a little... A little something in them veins that mm-hmm. the the elite hasn't been able to offer, right? So I think it might be a good time just to freshen them up, moving them over to WWE. And I don't know what WWE is doing right now because they're laying on a they're sitting on a lot of talent again. They're not using, right? So it might be a good time for both of those companies to kind of like shake a little of the dead weight and. That way, go over to AEW, and then same thing, AEW go over to WWE, so we can get like some fresh television on both shows. It is going to be interesting to see. Roosh just resigned with AEW, maybe today. I think he put out yeah. that he's back on AEW. I think that that's the right move for him, oh, for yeah. sure. One hundred percent in WWE. Yep. Uh, but it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see, man, what happens this fall if if the Bucks and Kenny's contract is truly up in November. I don't know who else's contract is up, but we know the next person has to jump regardless one way or another. Either there's going to be a top name that's going to go from AEW, WWE, or there's going to be a top name from WWE going to AEW. It just has to happen. It's going to be interesting to see what it is. Uh, But I don't think there's anybody in WWE realistically because of the booking style of AEW right now that could make a big that would move the needle. Roman's not going. Over to, right, Bloodline's not over going. To WWE. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte. Maybe Charlotte. Maybe Charlotte. I don't think she leaves. I don't think she leaves. WWE. Yeah. But maybe if she was to go, she could move the needle. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Because so they're doing something with uh, Ciampa, right? But I could see Ciampa going over to AEW and being a big deal over them, right? Man, being I wanted Johnny hitter. to go. When Johnny's contract was up and he was out, when they had the baby, I was like, man, him and Candace are perfect for AEW. Yeah. And I and I, I think at times when I watch Raw, like I think Triple H forgot that Johnny Gargano is under contract. Hey, it's okay. You can bring him back. He's he's healthy. He's been healthy for months now. <laughs> but I will say this. He's been pretty last, mid since he's been in, on the main roster. Last he has. Night, last night, Tommaso right. kind of looked like Ciampa. He finally looked like the Champa that I know and love last night. Now, I don't know if it's because of Triple H, if it's because of his dance partner, Bronson, but I did think that. I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is a great showing for Champa to get for people it's to get It's strictly, strictly his uh, theme song, No One Will Survive. That's the reason. Why, <laughs> why I liked him last night? Because he got yeah. his music back? Okay, he got, he got his it. theme song back. Got it, okay. That's what it I is. I didn't notice. All right. That's bad. <laughs> we, I know this. I usually, right away. of course, I usually ask you guys on the Wednesday pod, what are you most looking forward to for the remainder of the wrestling week? You got some big shows coming up before we do our next pod on Sunday. Rudy, I'll start with you. What are you looking forward to most? I don't want to just automatically say what's next for the bloodline, but I'm going to say it because honest, that's my truth. So I want to see what we see on SmackDown. Okay. I'm looking forward to the road to SummerSlam, of course. The road to home. I want to see how we going to get there, what matches I'm going to get, what matches uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump in. Uh, I, need to, I, need to, I need to feel it. So both of you guys are going WWE SmackDown. I am 100% going Collision. <laughs> you, you gave it to away the earlier. Point, <laughs> to the point where I thought about skipping impact on Saturday night that we have tickets for to stay at home and watch Collision. That's crazy. So listen, I called you personally, maybe an AEW hater. Wow. Yeah, FTR, MJF, and Adam Cole. Well, remember I said MJF and Adam Cole is outside the bloodline, the best thing going for Mm -hmm. me. So to be able to see 
the blow off or just, just to see that tag title match. I'm excited for and we don't talk about impact on the pod because we don't have the channel that impact comes on, but we will be in the building this weekend and they announced, which I'm excited for, uh, Mike Bailey and Jonathan Grissom versus the Rascals is being taped in Chicago. That's gonna be a, a hell of a tag match. So they just announced that on Twitter. Awesome. Man, they gotta do something with their production, man. That show's hard to watch. And that's with having Trinity. I would love to know their 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 metrics, like how much their metrics are going up. Not even just ratings, but you know, they you know, social media engagement. Uh, merchandise sales, whatever you know, numbers they look at, pay per view buys. I, I would just like to know what she's bringing to the show. I know she has to have had an uptick for sure. I would just like like to know like what a significant bump she's done. Their webpage is cool. That's what I can speak to. I don't watch their show Damn. unless we were there. But no, seriously, that's I'm being crazy. honest with you. But that, but that's a, that's a thing though. It, it, whatever. That's the best we can give them. Man, they're with. Web- your website is off the hook. Your website's <laughs> fantastic, man. Have you seen that website? It's the best I've seen. Hell, it's better than AEW. News. It's better than Crazy. AEW. Okay, how about that? It's better than AEW. Oh, boy. All right, what else y'all got before we get up out of here? I'm good. Got to spend this afternoon and this evening with two of my favorite guys. Talking some wrestling. I didn't get to do it at the beginning of the show because you didn't ask me. But I had to bring it back somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Shake my head. Ishan, you got anything before we get out of here? Peace, love, and hair grease, y'all. All right. Y'all heard it. It's a wrap. Episode 51 is in the can. We'll be back at you guys on Sunday. If you are not following our Twitter, what are you waiting for? Go on. Well, actually, whatever. I'm still calling it Twitter. I'm always going to call it Tweets. I don't give a damn what Elon's doing. He's got to figure it out. But whatever he's doing, we stare are on there at that's F and W. We are on YouTube at that's freaking wrestling. And of course, you guys know, subscribe to the podcast. Five star reviews. Leave us a nice written message about how we're awesome and we're cool and we're fantastic and you love to listen to us. We would appreciate all those kind thoughts. And they say it helps us in the rankings too to get it in front of more people. So that's always awesome. That's it, guys. We will talk to you guys on Sunday. Peace. Bye.